Hey guys, in this video I'm going to walk you through my patch for bow and arrow from scratch. I have another video that I'll link below that talks about sensory and Ableton stuff that's going on in this, but I thought the patch can stand to have its own video because there's quite a lot going on. There are two voices that I'm playing in my modular synth. I'm using rings for bass and I'm using the DFAM for an esoteric riff kind of thing. With rings, something I really like to do is patch noise into the in input to excite the resonator. And then you have tonal control. From there, which is super cool. To make this not just drone, we can patch the noise through a VCA first. And then we can have control over the volume. So since we're playing this with our kick, what we can do is use an envelope to open up this VCA. Um, I have my kick coming in. I can see it right here. I can patch that into stages for a little envelope. With stages, when it's in the green mode, it's just a decay envelope with uh, CVable time. So if I patch this decay envelope to the CV input of the noise, Now I have some nice control. To take it a little step further, we can actually use velocity from the kick to control the decay time, like moving this slider for us. And I have velocity of the kick coming in on this output right here. So if I patch that into the time input of stages, now I can control that envelope length with velocity on my kick. So now that we have the way we're going to play rings rhythmically worked out, uh, the next thing we need is pitch information. I have pitch coming from a sequence in Ableton, and I have that coming out of output 4 on the shuttle control. So if I patch that into 1 volt per octave, the pitch will follow the sequence. One problem that I run into when using sequences for pitch and drums for the gate is that sometimes the pitch will update right before or right after a gate from the drum, which doesn't really sound that nice. Here's one note, and then if I fast forward to the next note, you can hear it update when I didn't hit the kick. To prevent the sequence from coming through without a gate, we can use something called sample and hold. A single segment on stages that's in the yellow mode acts as sample and hold for us. So I just patch the volt per octave sequence into the input. If we split our gate from the kick, I can patch that back into the envelope segment. I can also patch it into the sample and hold. And then I can take the output of the sample and hold into volt per octave. So now the sequence will only update its pitch whenever I have a kick. Something that I like to do to give rings a little more life is to mix an LFO in with the pitch. To do that we need to combine the pitch with the LFO using a precision adder. I have an LFO coming out of output 16 on shuttle control and I'm going to patch it through a VCA so I can control its level and then if I take the output from that VCA into the precision adder as well and then take that resulting pitch information into volt per octave. Now I can mix in the LFO with the pitch sequence. It feels intuitive to me to use velocity to control the amount of LFO that's mixed in. And we already have velocity from our kick going into the decay time. So if we mult that out as well, put that back into the time. I can patch that same signal into the CV input for this VCA. And then I would bring up that attenuator a little bit. Even with this super low, that's too much for me. One thing I like about this quad VCA is that you can tailor the curve of the CV input. So this knob is making it more um, 
exponential, which gives me a lot more room to work with before it get the LFO gets too crazy. So that's a, that's a pretty soft hit and a hard hit. Just a little bit makes the sound a lot more interesting. One other trick I did in bow and arrow is I used audio from my snare to also excite rings. I have audio from my snare coming in to this input on my case and I could use a stackable cable to combine our noise envelope and the audio from my snare. It's kind of subtle, but I really like it. So to play the DFAM, I'm actually using a one-shot clip. You can see it light up on shuttle control. First thing we need to do is patch the gate output to a trigger input on the DFAM. And I'm going to go ahead and patch the output from the DFAM through the morphogene. And this is just going to basically act as a delay for us. Then we need to patch the pitch sequence into one of the VCO CV inputs. So now I can trigger my sequence. And this acts as a dry wet knob. Something I like to do with this kind of setup is actually patch the trigger input into the advance clock. Not only does this give us some nice visual feedback, but it also allows us to just create a little bit of dynamic variation using the onboard sequencer. So that's the patch for bow and arrow. If you haven't yet, check out the other video where I explain the sensory percussion and Ableton setups. You can also watch the full video of me recording the song. Thanks for watching.